I'm here at Wick Harbour right now just seeing uh, all of the various developments that are turning this into a, a really thriving uh, harbour, uh, exploiting all of the potential around oil and gas and offshore renewables. You're visiting Kajengo, a company that is uh, using technology here to bring access to diagnosis of animal health problems to farmers in some of the remotest parts of Africa. It's a way of using technology uh, to help people in the developing world. It's a really innovative and exciting uh, business proposal and one that is going extremely well. What we've seen is a tremendous uh, uh, restoration of the landscape so that once the grass, um, which has been recently seeded, grows and covers the hillside of the restored site, it will be extremely difficult uh, for passers-by to tell that there ever had been mining operations there. So this shows that restoration can be done and is being done. I'm in the Malmaison Hotel in Dundee, which is a fantastic example of private sector investment to regenerate a building that was a hotel many years ago, which had fallen to disrepair. It's now an absolutely magnificent asset to the city of Dundee. And it's private sector investment that reinforces the public sector investment that's going in to regenerating the waterfront in the city of Dundee, which is transforming the city and providing much needed economic opportunities for the people of the city. The Commonwealth Business Conference is a fantastic opportunity for companies in Scotland to essentially explain the strengths of the Scottish economy and the Scottish marketplace to Commonwealth countries and businesses and to encourage that whole process of cooperation and internationalisation. The Social Growth Fund is a £16 million fund that's designed to support investment in improving social and economic outcomes within Scotland. And here at Spartans, it's a perfect example of how that investment fund can be used to essentially support enhancement of facilities, investment in activities that creates very beneficial social outcomes for the young people that are involved in the Football Academy and the other activities that are underway here at Spartans. I'm in the rehabilitation unit at uh, Glasgow Southern General Hospital looking at the very latest technology in prosthetics. I've been talking to quite a number of patients uh, who are absolutely delighted with the service they're getting. For example, a chap who had his leg blown off in the Falklands. Well, I'm here at uh, Glasgow City College and we've been, uh, as a guest of the Royal Television Society, talking about the future of broadcasting and television in particular in relation to what will happen with the yes vote. We've got a, a strong sector of value uh, to the Scottish economy from broadcasting of 400 million, but that could be so much more. So the next 50 days getting consistent training in and, and getting a few more races in um, to make sure that I'm fully prepared and, and fit and healthy for that start line. Okay, well, we're here today to celebrate the Queen's Baton arriving at Glen Eagles and uh, being beside the, the Ryder Cup, which is a, a unique coming together of the two biggest sporting events that Scotland's ever hosted, the Commonwealth Games and the Ryder Cup, and a great symbol of the, the baton beside the, the cup. And who better to carry the baton than uh, Katrina Matthew, one of our fantastic uh, female golfers and a great ambassador for Scotland. Well, we're here today to welcome uh, not just the Ryder Cup that you see uh, behind us that's here for a visit. The idea of Hugh Dan McLennan, the, the legendary Shinty commentator, I, I was up at a Shinty tournament in Aberdeen a few years back and he said, wouldn't it be great with the Commonwealth Games coming if we assembled some of the great trophies of the various sports in Scotland and put them together for a public display? People would be real interested. It's a, an amazing thought. Uh, we staged the best games ever. Uh, we've restored, in many ways, the reputation of the Commonwealth Games, which I'm sure will now go from strength to strength, just as Team Scotland will. I think there's two factors. One is the spirit, the camaraderie in Team Scotland, which was exceptional. But secondly, of course, every venue, every place, they were roared on by a, an extraordinary, enthusiastic, patriotic crowd. And it really is about the people of Scotland making their mark and making their respect in acknowledging, one, the the anniversary or the centenary of the start of World War I, but very importantly to respect and to remember, but to ask the question, what do we learn from this? Uh, and I think it's an important opportunity for people to express uh, their gratitude to those that have died, but also to make sure that we commit ourselves again to learning the lessons of war and that is what this service is all about.